If you're looking for the ultimate Cape Cod travel guide, then you have clicked on the right video. My name is Sarah, I am a travel expert, and I have been coming to Cape Cod for nearly 30 years. I've also connected with locals in the area to share the best things to do here and everything you need to know before visiting, including when to visit, how to get here, and all of those key little tidbits that you really wouldn't know unless you talked to a local. But before we get into the travel guide, here are some of the most important things that you should know when visiting Cape Cod. First off, the traffic is horrendous. You can get here by ferry, car, take a bus, or even fly. But if you're taking a car, which is the most common way to get here, then you should definitely drive here on a weekday. Weekends, the traffic is an absolute nightmare. So if you have no other option but to travel on a weekend, just prepare to add at least one hour to your trip because I promise you, you will be in bumper to bumper traffic trying to cross over those bridges. Well, the most popular time of year to visit is summer because Cape Cod is known for its beaches. Actually, in the winter, this entire area becomes way less populated. Visit July through August and you'll have an amazing time and get to enjoy some of the awesome beaches here. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you are into traveling. But without further ado, let's just get to the ultimate Cape Cod travel guide. There's no better way to see the natural beauty of Cape Cod than doing a flying tour. Now, if you've never been in a small plane, this is the spot to do it your first time because the views are absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do this today. We're doing it with stick and rudder aero tours. I actually have flown with them in the past and I loved it so much that I am back again and we are going to go in this plane today. We have a lovely pilot named Kyle who's gonna take us into the skies. So we're about to go up in the air. We are all buckled in. This is actually a Skyhawk. There's several different types of planes that they have here. This is so gorgeous. The colors of the ocean and the sandbars and the different islands alone, it looks like a painting. And it's so cool because you know you have the tides in Cape Cod. So no matter what time of day that you do a tour like this, it's gonna look a little bit different. And there's um, three different types of tours that they offer here, a 15 minute tour, a 30 minute tour, and a 60 minute tour. They'll tell you all about what you're seeing. This is the uh, South Beach here that we're gonna come to first. That'll be coming on the right side of the airplane. Okay. And the mainland will be on the left. As we come around the corner a little bit, the first thing that we'll see is the Coast Guard station, which is where the lighthouse is. Which really helps you put context to the beautiful view. Probably the most popular thing to do in Cape Cod is go to the beaches. There are so many beaches here and all of them honestly are really great. But my one note is that when you go to a beach, make sure you at least go to the Bayside beaches, which means you're going to experience low and high tide. And if you've never experienced that, what I have around me is low tide. This is such a special time of day. It happens twice a day. The tides change about every six hours and during low tide, all of the water will go out about half a mile, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, and you can actually walk all the way out. It's super beautiful, especially if it happens during sunset, and depending on how long you're here, it could happen during sunset. To figure out when low tide is, there are several tide apps that you can use, or you can look them up online. But if you wanna to go to the ocean beaches, there are many of those too that I recommend. One of the most popular ocean beaches is Nasset Beach. But if you're a surfer, check out Coast Guard Beach, or Marconi Beach, and another super popular beach is Mayflower Beach. And if you're staying for the evening hours, remember to bring layers, because Cape Cod can get a little chilly at night. But most of all, enjoy the beach. Whale watching is one of the coolest things you can do in Cape Cod, and I recommend doing it with Dolphin Fleet. These guys have been doing this for years, and they have a whale sighting guarantee policy. So if you don't see whales, when you go out there, you're gonna see them on the next trip. Whales are normally seen in Cape Cod area between April and October, and this experience is normally about three hours long. I've been with them so many times, and every single time I see whales, it's very exciting. My one tip for you, though, is make sure you bring some type of layers because out there in the ocean, it's 10 to 15 degrees cooler than it is on land. But let's go see some whales. This is gonna be pretty cool. 
You can't come to Cape Cod without going to Provincetown. This is the crown jewel of the Cape. This spa is always hustling and bustling. It's really known for its LGBTQ friendly community. They have tons of art galleries here as well, great restaurants, great bars, and an amazing entertainment scene. If you're looking for drag shows, this is the spot to come, especially in the summer months during the weekends. They have some of the most <laughs> fun shows you'll see. And there's just always some interesting people watching in this area, a lot of great stores as well. Now I'm gonna highlight some spots briefly that you absolutely need to check out when you're visiting here. Let's start with this one right next to me. This is the Lobster Pot, and this is my favorite restaurant in Provincetown. This is a spot where Anthony Bourdain actually used to work and is really great for seafood. So if you're looking for the perfect seafood lunch or dinner, head to the Lobster Pot. It's very family friendly. I do recommend getting reservations in advance though. They're very, very popular. Another spot you need to check out is the Portuguese Bakery, but you have to head to this one early because what you want to order is the malasada. This is a sweet fried dough, essentially. It's so delicious. It's definitely a, you know, a treat. You don't get this one for breakfast. I mean, I guess you could, but it's like a fried dough, so it's very sweet and super delicious. I can eat these every day. Worth the wait. But they sell out of this one so fast. We're here at 5 p.m. They've been sold out for hours. So make sure that you get it ahead of time because this dessert is delicious. If you're looking for a perfect cocktail spot, come to Harbor Lounge. This is where I've been coming for years. They also have craft beer, wine. Plus they have a nice outdoor space outside so you can sit indoors in their beautiful lounge or you know, take a break on the beach. Does it get better than that? If you're a wine lover, then you need to check out some of Cape Cod's amazing vineyards. There are actually three of them. I am here at Truro Vineyards, which is a family-owned business since 2007. And this is more than just a place that produces wine. Now they do have four different types of grape varietals that produce a wide array of different styles of wine, but they also have a distillery here that has gin, rum, whiskey, and Amaro. Now when you visit, make sure you do their tour. You actually get to go into the vineyards like where I am right now. You'll learn all about their process of growing grapes. You'll also go into where they have all their barrels. Finally, you can visit inside their distillery where you'll see how they produce all their different liquors. Now let's go and check out some of their wines, their liquors, and their food. So we're here at the tasting portion at Truro Vineyards and you get five different types of wine for $15. So for every tasting you do, you actually get 5% off in their store here. But I just wanna highlight the Triumph because this one is my favorite. This one is a red, it has like a slight oakiness and you get that like kind of dryness in your mouth. I love that. Their white wines are on the sweeter side, so if you like sweet wine, then this is definitely the spot for you. With every tasting you do, you actually get to bring home the cup for your memories. They make four types of liquors here, rum, gin, whiskey, and Amaro. I was just brought this incredible rose, cranberry, sangria. Like, hello, that's all the delicious things in one cup. Oh my God, that is incredible. Yeah. It's as refreshing as summer needs to be, but tastes like Christmas. They also have their rosé gin. This is a very unique thing. You don't really see a lot of rosé gins, but they use their rosé wine. They infuse it in the gin. You have that beautiful pink color, and this is really nice to add to a lemonade. Oh, that's nice. You know, you don't get that like subtle sweetness a lot with gin, but you get it with this. That's great. Amaro. We got the amber rum here and a spiced rum. Mm. That spiced rum, incredible. They have a food truck here. One of the owners is the chef. So there's a lot to choose from. There's always the focus on lobster rolls. This one's beautiful looking. This is a burrata peach arugula salad. Right here we have the fried cauliflower. Whoa, so much flavor packed into that. Some fried chicken here. Some of you may know that my husband is from Guatemala, so I have an educated taco palate, thanks to him. So, this is a big moment here. That taco was super savory and also had a sweetness. These tacos are fire, as I learned from the kids. That's the new lingo. Well, I'm gonna enjoy this meal, check the spot out, 
delicious food, really good wine, really good cocktails. You don't want to miss it on Cape Cod. If you love gardens, then you absolutely must check out Heritage Museum and Gardens. And here you're going to find thousands and thousands of types of flowers, trees, and various types of plants. You can walk around here for hours, so plan your time accordingly. They also have an automobile museum and a museum of Cape Cod history. And don't worry if you get hungry, they have a delicious uh, little garden cafe where they serve sandwiches, salads, and soups. Now if we go a little bit into the history of this land, it was actually a farm in the 1600s all the way until the late 1800s. Now after it changed hands a few times, a man named Charles Dexter purchased it in the 1920s when he received a terminal illness that was told that he would only live about a year. So he wanted to spend the rest of his time growing rhododendrons, which were his favorite flower. Turns out that apparently gardening can uh, extend your life. I mean, that's no doctor diagnosis, but the man ended up living 22 years making over 200,000 different varieties of rhododendrons and he is the one that started these beautiful gardens here and there's a hundred acres here. There are also sculptures and fountains. It's very accessible as well for all different types of people. They have programs in place if you have mobility issues and other things of that nature. Right now I'm here in July which is when they have their hydrangea festival but they have a rhododendron festival in May and during the holiday season right after Thanksgiving they have a beautiful lights festival. So really cool place, a lot going on. Make sure you check it out. Thanks so much for joining me in Cape Cod. If this video helped you plan the perfect trip, then make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.